four for 77, chasing 279 for victory. I am sick to the sight of of these gang of absolute useless pricks. I'm sick of them. They've used up all their goodwill. Sure, they've given me moments I'll never forget in my life. The happiness that I've received from these same players, all gone. Gang of useless pricks. Let's be right about two things here. New Zealand have been outstanding in the last day and a half, probably two full days. They have been by far the better team. They have performed outstandingly, individually and as a collective. Wonderful stuff. They've turned around the feeling. The bowling's been better. The batting, much improved from what we've seen so far in the series as a whole since Australia got there. The Aussies, a gang of fucking useless pricks, won the World Cup wonderfully. The Ashes, what a great series that was. World Test Champions, excellent stuff. An excellent and highly enjoyable summer. Right now, Four for 77, chasing 279, gang of useless pricks. I expect Australia to win in the first session tomorrow without losing a wicket. Sam Perry, thoughts? I thought Brody Grundy played very well. Uh, footy season. On Thursday. Footy season. In the footy. Um, I felt really privileged uh, to, to go along with you to the groundsman's rooms last night and have, have a beer with those guys. Um they came across really lovely to me. Um, there's an argument yep. that it's a wonderful pitch that they've created. It offers a lot with the new ball. Nipped around to the point where Australia steamrolled New Zealand in two sessions on day one. Um, there's runs if you're able to apply yourself. It definitely flattened out today. But it's very clear that they swapped the pitches uh, at yep. the innings break. And that is cause for concern in the international mm. cricketing community. Uh, but I don't know too much about it because I pretty much have my eyes on the on on the footy. Um, do what like what what's what's happening? So Marsh gonna have to get the runs or something? Is he? Is that? Mate, I, I just really enjoyed round zero. Um, and like the like New, like the Northern States getting some early round footy matches, mate. What about the game of the Gabba? Like uh, yeah. like Lions and uh, and and the Blue Baggers there. So mate, yeah. how good was that? 40, 46 points down, weren't they? Got it up by a point. I mean, that's yeah. that's what I'm here for. And I I cannot wait. It's thirty eight degrees in Melbourne right now, and I just cannot wait for more football. No, in all um, in all seriousness, Australia set two hundred and seventy nine to win on a very very manageable pitch. It's hard chasing two eighty in the fourth innings wherever you go, but I thought this is a good challenge for these guys because a lot of them haven't scored runs. And they've bowled New Zealand out in the first day in two sessions for 160. But it's still very, very difficult to win test matches when batters don't score runs. That's pretty much where I'm mm. getting to with this. And I agree with you. We can give all the flowers in the world to Matt Henry and Ben Sears, uh, both of whom were you know, just outstanding with the ball this afternoon, bowling with pace, fire, accuracy. But fuck me, it's, it, fuck me, it's annoying to see guys get out the same way all the time. It really is. Mm. <laughs> and like, so many of them are just so out of form. Um, or worse, I'm not really sure. And that also means Hello England. I'm sure more of you guys are watching this video than the one that Welcome. we put out this morning. Congratulations. I get how it works. In enjoy. Um, you know, the, the, the way... No, like, you know, the, the, the way the Aussie batters... Just, yeah, drink it in. Just get that bigger bowl of cereal and just yeah. eat it up, boys. Yeah, well, and like you say, you say the right things. Right? Henry and Ben Sears strapped the feedback on this afternoon and went to work. That's just, that's just what they did. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, it's it's pretty disappointing um, and obviously awesome for everybody else and congratulations to them. Uh, <laughs> well, this is, this is when things get good for TGC when Australia fuck it up. So welcome, rest of world. Uh, we haven't seen you since the Gabba when Shamar Joseph did his thing. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look at the scorecard for New Zealand's innings who started the day two for about 140 or so, 40 runs in front. Uh, of Australia at that point. They were bowled out for 372 in the end, um, but there were multiple contributions. There was actually four guys got to 50, plus Kugler and got 44. Thank God he did something, because um, I'm pretty sure he's not there to bowl in this innings, uh, or in this game, generally speaking, or at the end of last game. Anyway, he contributed. He got 44. He was last man out. Latham, 73. Williamson, 51, of course, out last night. Ratchin, Ravindra, 82. Batted really nicely. Almost like a combination of two guys that I can't really think of right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl Mitchell, 58. Nice as well. And then 
then they went through a bit of a patch where they lost maybe three for 15, three for 20, and then they lost their last four wickets as well in New Zealand for about to 20 or 30 runs as well. So I sort of fell in clusters there. Um, have a look at the bowlers. Pat Cummins was outstanding. Unlucky to miss out on the fire for, I suppose. Four for 62. Nathan Lyon finally received a bowl and took three wickets off his uh, 16.2 overs, uh, three for 49. Um <clears throat> Everyone else basically had a go except for Smith and Usman. Um, but uh, that's the state of play. Then going to the Australian innings, and it started off pretty bad, and then it went worse from there. Um, uh, Smith was LBW and took one with him, despite Usman. Ba- you could literally feel Usman saying, like, no, I don't know, man, looks pretty out. But he's Steve Smith, so he can take one with him. He was at LBW. Um, Usman Khawaja was caught by Tim Southey wonderfully at third slip. That was also off Matt Henry. Um, ben Sears had Marnus out about seven times in four balls, uh, caught and bowled in the end. And then Sears also had Cameron Green after the drinks break in the final session, um, caught between leaving and playing a shot. Travis Head, Mitch Marsh, the red ink batsman at the crease, uh, just having a look at the bowling figures at the moment. Southie, uh, as we know, playing his last game, uh, seven overs, none for 12. Henry and Sears were just absolutely fucking brilliant. Glenn Phillips chipped in with the last two overs at, uh, from one end of the day. And Kugeline, I'm pretty sure, is there, um, though I can't really really see how he plays um, as in a bowling capacity again. Um, <laughs> still managing to find ways to sledge New Zealand mm. despite them being absolutely excellent. Um, so um, I don't know what you want to talk about here, Pezza, but I'm still feeling some visceral things where um, I have seen every single one of this Australian team and literally none of them are in any danger of losing their spot. I saw a, a poll was put out um, by the nine papers um, asking where Steve Smith should bat, if anywhere, in the side for the next test match at the uh, for the first test match of the home summer in 2024-2025 against India. Ha, um, about a quarter of the people of that poll had him out of the side altogether. So what I'm saying is people are fucking dumb. There is no one in this side at the moment that is going to get dropped unless something dramatic happens in the next 10 months. Those things, of course, can occur. But my point being, if I can um, surmise this briefly, although I have been speaking for eight minutes now in a row, I've seen all these guys do wonderful, wonderful things, and they are very good players. But there's just a pattern here where I'm like, oh, you, I've forgotten everything you've done for me that's been good. What have you done for me lately? Because right now you're fucking scared. You're scared, and I don't know why you're scared, and you're a gang of useless pricks. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's a little, sort of a hospital pass there to you. That <laughs> I, don't, nah, I don't know what you want to do I, with that. I was just leaving the space or taking a beat, seeing if there's anything else you want to <laughs> chuck in there. <laughs> these, are great, these are great days because, because the, the, the people who watch us online beyond the AFP uh, who, who are there to, to see who's... <laughs> <laughs> just generally monitor proceedings. Um, mm. Think that we are like a lot of people think that we don't give it to Australia. So it's a great day to give it to Australia for that that pile of garbage that was served up this afternoon mm. as an excuse. We're still going to win as an excuse for Test match batting. I don't know how Cummins makes a hundred, but but he will. Uh, like obviously <laughs> it'll get done. All you know, Head and Marsh have to put on two hundred, and we're basically there. So no problem. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, <laughs> why do I still actually think that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not the same. I'm joking, but I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm kind of like, if they can get through Matt Henry and Ben Sears first spell tomorrow, it's pretty flat, yeah. uh, to, to, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, no, they, they, hey, look, they do have problems. They do have problems. Uh, they've, they've, actually, they've actually performed quite poorly as a batting group uh, for the last six, seven test matches. And they've been carried by the bowlers. There have been a couple of... Um, outlier innings but as a as a as a group they've been really unders uh and lucky i think to be playing against teams that haven't exploited it as much as t- top tier teams can and yet they've already lost that game to the west indies and they look set to lose this game as well unless somebody stands up of course that can happen i i've got a feeling new zealand do, new zealand will throw everything at australia in the first hour tomorrow uh so um Australia do have problems because there are batters who are being who are getting out in um, the same patterned, repeated fashion, and it isn't really acceptable to simply say, "Well, you know, this this will this will um, revert to the mean uh, at some point, and guys will start scoring runs again." I think it's a little bit more complicated that when you factor in the age of some guys, the nature of the dismissals of other guys. I'm not necessarily calling for anything. Um, as I said this morning, we all have memory. We are nothing if not goldfish, and guys um, 
will be remembered for what they've contributed holistically by the time Test Match Cricket rolls around again in November uh, later on this year. But I do think that some guys are going to need some runs in shield and to show that they need runs in shield. I mean, if you do start with Steve Smith, um, to me, uh, and I, I don't know if... I, I suspect there's some other views around that, but like it's pretty obvious that his... Um, his his technical approach to facing high quality new ball bowling is pretty untenable at this point. Whereas in the past he was able to cover his stump like a child who didn't know the leg before wicket rule and knew that his mm. eye was good enough to um, take full advantage of anyone who wanted to try and um, bowl at the stumps. Y- you are allowed to say, hmm, when do the old eyes start to be painted on? You know, because yeah. I felt like, uh, and I don't think there's any nostril damas to me, uh, that that's just all they. That's all people try and do to get him out now. Opening the batting, they bring him across, bring him across, bring him across. And if you're good enough, you can bowl at one forties and nip one back on the stumps. He's a good chance of missing it on the inside of his bat. It just happened, and it happened again. And you can see how frustrated he is with that. It's an approach. It's a technical approach to batting uh, that um, you know is inviting players to bowl at the stumps so he can take advantage of being too straight. But he continues to miss the ball at at high speed when it's nipping around a little bit now. India have got a few guys who can do that uh, in the summer. So, uh, what what is what what do we do? Do we just go through another preseason where he says he finds his hands? I hope so because I feel good when that happens. And uh, and then mm. you know when we go on from there, um, it, it's uh, you know he played that nice knock against the Windies in the second innings, but ultimately it's just. Um, it's been, it's very, it's unreliable. It's unreliable at the moment. Um, they set him up for that type of ball and they got him again. We've said all along that, you know, when when it goes, it's going to start to look really bad. Now, uh, admittedly, today, he didn't he didn't ski into the ball, uh, you know, on a, mm. on a, on a mm. black run there at Threadbow, as he did in the first innings, but it wasn't too far um, removed from that. I don't know what you think. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he made 91 in the second innings there at the Gabba in a losing side, so that sort of equates now to 250 True. red. Um, but uh, so, you, you know, the I think it was Burrard, actually. I saw Burrard tweet, um, that's Sundar Raisin, not the uh, official account of the country or the nation state of India. Thank you for clarifying. Um, and, he, and, it, and, and I think he worded it really nicely, and he said that whilst the verdict might not be, uh, might not have returned for Steve Smith opening the batting, the jury is certainly, is certainly out. And uh, I think that's a nice way to put it. You know, I just think about the tours coming up. As you know, India at home, you you would suspect maybe some slightly easier batting conditions what they face in New Zealand so far, possibly. Um, though it has sort of nipped around a little bit. Wouldn't say, wouldn't say there's been a stack of runs in Australia yeah. the last few years, anyway. And then they go to there's a tour in Sri Lanka, so that's probably more likely to face a lot of spin. Maybe less likely to get a seaming ball. I'm not. Sh- I mean, every international side, whether they have been completely. Um, uh, re- removed of funding in the in the uh, red ball game, still have you're still facing the best bowler that that country has produced in that age bracket. <laughs> so, um, or that in that generation, you know. So, like, uh, there is always going to be guys that have the capabilities to seemingly to knock him over, and it's the way that he has been knocked over, which was previously his strength, which is like, ah, eh, is this is this the best use? And I suppose that's that's what it comes down to: is this the best use uh, of one of our greatest ever Test players? Um, but I don't know. Um, you know, Australia's still going to win the game. We're probably going to paper over some cracks here, but uh, um, you know, there's there's a there's a hell of a lot of pressure on Alex Carey. I think tomorrow uh, there's probably Travis Head and Mitch Marsh as well. I don't think Travis Head's in any danger of being dropped. Mitch Marsh is a more of an interesting one, um, I think. But uh, I mean, he's literally won the Allen Border Medal for best all-round player for Australia in the past twelve months. That's partially a factor of just being available for heaps of games. I feel like these days, which is really harsh, but that's also kind of the truth. I feel like. Um, I think it's an interesting one. I think I think it's an interesting one tomorrow, and it's going to be hard. Um, and 279, I think I'm right in saying, would be the 14th highest chase for Australia in Test cricket history. It'll be the highest chase against New Zealand um, ever. Um, they chased 281 at Edgebaston. This this same group of players. Uh, well, Mitch Marsh wasn't playing that game, to be fair. Um, but uh, you know, seeing that it is possible uh, without enormous contributions from your batters that that basically relied on line and Cummins making 50 for the 10th wicket. But what I'm feeling Peza in this game is that it reminded me a little bit of the heading league game in 2019 where Australia bowled England out for 65, 66 and lost the game. Australia had New Zealand eight for 108 in this game in the first innings. And then they've, they, they just about got themselves to a hundred run lead in the first innings. And the conversation 
at the ground yesterday from people that I was talking to, not just um, in working in the media, just people in the ground. People at the interval after Australia was out were thinking, this game could be over today. And I don't know if Australia brought that energy into their innings um, or if it was just a job from the boys there at Tagley Oval uh, in the sheds as we're having beers with them last night, um, just changing the pitch over. But um, the turnaround and how easy it seemed... With, with some good play from New Zealand, of course. Like Kane and, uh, Kane and Tom Latham last night were really, really good. Really important stage of the game. Just feels like Australia didn't put them away in 2019. <laughs> I'm drawing a bit of a long bow with that. They didn't put them away properly in the first test match here. Um, but they should, probably should have won the game by fucking 500. And then they've just sort of let New Zealand get back in. And I just feel like this team never fucking smashes anyone. They just... They just let the other team back in enough and then sometimes the other team who have world-class players, as everyone does in international cricket, they're just good enough to win some games. And it's like Australia should never... Australia, from having eight for 108 in the first inning, should never be in a position where they're like, New Zealand should now win this game. Uh, am, I, am, I, am, I too, uh, am I too Australian and asking for too much thinking like that? Because no, the, uh, the team is a very good team. You can't... Like, everybody... Accept, it's, uh, I just wouldn't th- talk about it in a team context. Like there's something about the the nature of the group. The nature of the group is as good as it's ever been, really, uh, until you go back to the uh, the Steve War stuff. You know, they they win, and for a long time it's looked like that question over whether the batters are shit house um, uh, was a debatable one because so often they were unders, but the other team were even more unders. So you know, mm. we continued to win, but it's when you are starting to mount losses, which hasn't come yet, but we're, we're truly, like, it, cracks are being papered over, uh, that mm. you start to ask questions. And I think it's a very isolated batting issue, this team. Like, there, there are guys who are getting out the same way all the time, uh, and they're, they're unreliable. And if you look at a day like today, like we're genuinely talking to the groundsman, and he said this on air today as well, uh, they expected New Zealand to bat all day. That's how flat it was. And even Australia, mm. when like how how you got the scorecards there, Marsh and Head, have they put on fifty yet? It was something something close to that. Once they got something to like that. once they got to fifteen, sixteen overs, Matt Henry, you know, had an incredible spell and had to go off. Uh, nine overs, yeah, yeah, because bowled nine overs on the on the bounce, and um, and Ben Sears mm. was firing up as well. But like you know, this is this is Test cricket. Like once if you're able to if you're able to get through that those spells on a pretty docile deck in Test terms, then you mm. cash in after that. And of course, there's going to be some damage. Good bowlers are good bowlers, but four down, it's it's extremely disappointing. And it go like these are guys that are just batting badly. They've batted badly for mm. a, um f- for a good amount of time now, where you can say this isn't uh, an aberration. They they're just not batting very well. And uh, you know, I think that it, it, like there are some interesting selection questions ahead from a macro high level perspective for. George Bailey and his team heading into the summer because there's going to be a huge temptation to keep this team together to ensure that they can turn India over at home and um, atone for the last two series losses there, do the same to England, which is what we normally do because we know the blueprint of how to beat them, and uh, and then everyone can sail off into the sunset and the issue of regenerating this team is going to be a problem for somebody else. Andrew McDonald might move on from that point as well because he, he signaled that. Um, Pat Cummins has, has um, implied at times that... Uh, uh, that he would like to captain for a few years. So there's just a lot, a lot of change coming up. And I don't think it's unreasonable to look at this um, uh, data set of the last couple of tests, which is now stretching into seven, if you think of the Aussie summer and this, and going, some things are happening with batters that are continuing to happen. And, and some people are getting older. I'm not calling for anything, but I'm curious as to what they do. I just think sitting on your hands and going, well, you know, glad Greeny's in. Or something is, uh, is is probably not enough. It's a, it's. I do think they've they've got some trouble ahead, and and it'll be good to. Um, I mean, and and look. To be fair, they probably have been proactive with it in terms of getting Green in to bat number four, Steve Smith opening the batting, or what and whatnot. But you know, it it does feel the batting does feel a bit of a castle built on sand as well. Mm. Who even knows when. You know, Usman's had a hot run for so long, but he's probably regressed back to a mean a little bit this summer as well, and he's not getting any younger. You just like you, you, when you go through it, like batter by batter, you're like, geez, there's um, it's it's starting it's starting to have more fragility than the safety that I yearn for every day in my loins. Hmm. If you yearn for safety yourself, and indeed for savings, 
then why don't you jump onto smithopticsaustralia.com. How's that for a segue, Pez? I'll be pleased with that. And use the code FAST for 25% off. Now, I've said this before, but half the team basically are wearing these Smith Optics sunglasses. So if you do want to look like a fucking loser, like one of these fucking idiots on the field representing Australia at the moment, then you can go to Smith Optics Australia. Use the code FAST. If you want to look like an absolute idiot, if you want to look like one of the current Australian cricketers on the cricket field, a pathetic loser that can't mm. hold a fucking bat, yep. then you can go to that website and use the code FAST. You get 25% off. What else, Pezza? What else do you get at that website for 25% off? You didn't get 25% off the entire snow range. The mm. entire mm. snow range. And can I just add on top of mm. that? He goes, if you also want to look yeah. like a pathetic loser who sits on the internet pushing age 40... At his house with a little with a couple of pieces of equipment knocking around, talking about guys trying their best. If you want to look like that kind of loser, that pathetic loser, then you can get twenty five percent off the sunglass range as well at uh, Smith Optics. I mean, it, it, <laughs> we're all down. We're we're all down after after what's happened. And there's India sitting on its throne, going, "Oh, what a sensational day it's been for us!" Yeah. And don't worry, we remember you, India. You, you, you're gonna you're gonna need a few more years of uh, destroying everybody before we actually deal with what happened to you guys last year. But nevertheless, that's right. If you, if anyone out there wants to look like pathetic loser Australians, <laughs> whether on the field or online, twenty five percent off your sunglasses or the entire snow range using the code Fast. If you're heading to the snow this year, then you want to look you want to look good. You want to look your best. Now, Smith Optics have supported us throughout the entire Australian summer and also got behind us um, for the New Zealand series. So we thank them very much. There's obviously another day's play tomorrow to wrap up that sponsorship. But, yeah, it's been awesome. Um, but what hasn't been awesome is um, how they've made me feel. Just Basically, just today. I felt fine yesterday. I was happy yesterday. Mm. Um, and I'm not really sure if we should talk about what happened when we went into the – when we went into the group, like, so, so um, Rupert, head groundsman there at uh, Hagley Oval, he came to our show in Christchurch. Uh, lovely guy, Lockie, came over to me yesterday and said, oh, come, come and have a beer with us um, uh, in, the, in the groundsman shed after the day's play. Popped in there. Not really sure we should be talking about what was on the screen uh, when, we, when we walked oh, in. Oh, well, you have to be um, clear now. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was legal. It was legal. Yeah. It was like everything was legal. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't pornography, okay? It, was, it wasn't anything of that sort of nature, but it did, it did make me think, you know what, there's something about these boys, and I'm kind of going for them now, if I'm honest. I'm kind of I'm kind of behind Team Hagley Oval ground yes. stuff, oh, if me I'm too. honest. They and were, they were very game. welcoming. I'm not, I'm not sure what the hierarchy is, actually, of who's in charge of the, <laughs> of the Oval or, or not, with what, with what you said there, because mm. they had Al on screen today as well, and he seemed to sort of be the alpha of the room last night as well. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, like, I, I don't know, and I... You know, I refuse to know, which is my right as an ignorant Australian, yep. you know, um, who's instead speaking about the appalling performance of our uh, of our batters today, who are allowed to get out to some good balls, just not all the time. Mm. Uh, but yeah, no, it was it was not it was nice of them um, to to have us in, and uh, also yeah to um, to I guess trick us because yeah. what they did to the and pitch also- in between innings was um, is a disgrace. I, we never did get to, to get to the bottom of who won that boxing match uh, that they were watching, but it was um, it was it was it was quite a sight. It was quite a sight. Let me tell you from the boys. So thanks very much for the beer last night, fellas. Um, should we do hashtag RTGC? Hashtag as, uh, RTGC. As people finish up their cereal of Australian tears this morning or exactly. this afternoon, whatever time it is where you're watching. Uh, this is from Zach Dawson seven nine one five boys. There's a couple of tickets left for day four. Do I buy one? Will we even make it to day four? Why why haven't I had <laughs> sex in six months? Need some help, lads. <laughs> well, my response to that is I don't even know where Christchurch is, if I'm honest. Um, so I'm so. <laughs> you know what's funny? You know what I was about? He goes, so, say this on air. Um, we, um, yeah. we, we did an interview with Laura McGoldrick for Sky NZ Cricket on day one and Australia had, when mm. Australia had them uh, <laughs> four for nothing at lunch or whatever, or three for 60 or something, and we didn't even bowl yeah. that well. And we were being mm. so arrogant on air about how we're about to win this game. And it, I, I, I'm because I don't think the pieces come out yet, as in the uh, the, the, the right the the, the, the yeah. program that's what going was filmed. To air. Yeah. yeah, right. Uh, and I'm just thinking how bad that's going to look on air, which is great uh, yeah. for New Zealand. Like, which is again why we're saying hello to everybody in global cricket today who's tuned in for the response to. Yep. The garbage that was so served up in the last session yeah. today by our bats. Yeah. 
Uh, that's right. I'm, I remember clearly saying that, like, I've never seen New Zealand play well. I hear good things, but I've literally never seen them play well. So now that's going to be on a loop and probably turn into a ring. Someone's going to auto tune that if that's still a thing, as it was ten years ago. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be put in slow mo. It's probably going to get some good airtime. So um, if anything, uh, once again, I've saved TGC. Uh, not really sure how, but. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, um, there's good news for you because New Zealand are probably going to win this game now. Although, of course, I don't really believe that. But Neither. there's another video coming out tomorrow when the game is over. We'll get them five down. Look, yeah. And look, the view count's going to go one or two ways there. Um, and the aggression in the comments is also going to go one or two ways. But welcome back, everyone. I just want to welcome everyone mm. back. It's been, it's been a little while. But now everyone's back and we're all together and we can all see that we can all laugh and share in each other's failures, except for India, of course. Looking forward to the IPL, etc. All right. See you guys on the internet tomorrow. Cheers.